Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Oh my God. <laughs> so I was about to go live, and next thing you know, it's like this entire thing has changed, and I'm like, which one goes where? So it's, uh, it's good to be here. No matter what, technology, technology. So welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. As you know, I come live every Tuesday at 12 noon. And we talk about something exciting, something that is healing, or something, believe it or not, it can also be controversial. So I hope you are doing well that you and your family are healthy especially with everything that is going on nowadays um last week i went live from an event i even had uh, someone come live with me and you see for the last four and a half years i have not missed one single tuesday and I go live no matter where I am. And today we're going to be talking about this exact thing. Is, is this a commitment? Is this a dedication? Is this a, a promise? Or, you know, some people say, I'm addicted to social media. I'm addicted to this. And I have a question for that. If you believe you have an addiction, is it an addiction or are you dedicated to what it is that you get out of what you do? Hmm. Let me say that again. Is it an addiction or no matter what it is, let's say if it is smoking, drinking, gambling, uh, shopping, you know, whatever it is that we do, it is to fulfill a need. And it's a, usually it starts at the need to comfort something, to satisfy something, to make you feel good. And once you feel good, you like it. And when you like it and it feels good, then you want to do it again and again and again so you get the same feeling. And that's how habits are formed. When we like something, when we do something, we do it over and over, over and over. After a while, it becomes a pattern, a habit. And when you continue a habit, you come to find there is a pattern to it. When we continue the pattern to an extent that without even thinking about it, right? That you go and do something that it's like an automatic and it's not thought, it's not conscious decision. And when it becomes an automatic to a point that you think, if I can't function without it. I need this in order for me to do X, Y, Z. Then that's when we call it an addiction. So if I want to reverse it, just think about this. If you want to reverse it, sit back and think, of, am I so dedicated to having this because if you are dedicated to anything and you are a person that stands by your word, your decisions, your choices, it's like you take ownership of it. Are you dedicated to this? Or can you leave it? And if you are dedicated, was this a choice? And can you choose something different so the reason I'm saying this because as a clinical hypnotherapist this is exactly what I do I help my clients tap within their subconscious mind where it's all the patterns 
all the blueprints of every single behavior and habit is formed and stored and embedded in. Because you were not born as a smoker, eater, cheater, drinker. You are not born with those. Even you might turn around and say, what about those uh, who come from children who are born from parents or the mother who is an addict, who is an alcoholic, it runs in the blood. Well, you know that every few days after a few hours, 72 hours or 78 hours, the blood is uh, changed and we go through all this. It's like a transfusion. You can even get a blood transfusion. So, but the tendencies, we're talking about regular day in, day out, everyday folks. So what we are committed to we tap into the subconscious mind and we come to evoking and shedding a light to that pattern to that blueprint and once we do that we go to the aha this is where it started this is the emotional connection to this pattern or to the thing that I did and if it felt good or if it disrupted something, or I kept it because it gave me a sense of security, a sense of um, connection, it gave me a sense of belonging. And because that sense, that emotion connected to the action, to the behavior, we can modify it. That's when you come to modify that, you can easily and gently begin creating a new pattern. It can be magic through hypnosis, or it may not be a magical thing, and it may not happen instantaneously, although I've seen it happen instantaneously that someone has a pattern and shifts a pattern because we shift the emotional connection to it. So good to have you back. Thank you. Uh, I want to get out something of it. Exactly. So that's right. Hi, Louisa John. How are you, sweetheart? So the reason I'm coming up with this, because a few days ago, uh, at the event that I was, and what an incredible event. I'm going to post some pictures. It was called The Secret Knock, you know? You never know who's going to be there. It was powerful, powerful speakers, intel intelligent, and I'm going to post pictures that you would think, wow, what kind of an event you went. Here's the thing. Whatever you decide to do, no matter what it is, it can be from a habit, a behavior, going to a place, saying yes to something, when you make a decision, here's the caveat. Take ownership. Take ownership and do it. Complete it. And then when you come to it and you see that either you are not doing it or there is no, uh, the return on your investment is not strong enough or beneficial to you, that's when you change it. So that's, that's the pattern of habits as well. You do something over and over and it's already become embedded in you until there is a disconnection or if it is smoking or eating or gambling or cheating that the, the negative aspect of it the health factors or the discomfort coughing the discomfort in pain the discomfort of anything is far greater than the pleasure and that's the key that's the key in making that change so simply put we make changes in our life when either the pain is far too much or the pleasure 
is far greater. So today, I am sharing about a book that I read from this incredible uh, author that I met at the event. So many incredible authors, and I'm going to be sharing and promoting and talking about the books. This one is by Stephen Miller, and the book is called Where Broken Men Become the Mighty. So why am I sharing about this? It's the Adelman experience. Because as we were sitting and talking, I shared about my having my nonprofit for uh, motherless children, which is called Heal Within Kids. And he said, oh, I too have a nonprofit, but it is to empower men and how to strengthen and strengthen the confidence of men and all this from where broken men become the mighty. So as we be, as we began to share some aspects of this book and what he does and what we do and learning that I also work as a domestic abuse consultant where in our life do we take patterns or our behavior that we accept the victimhood and this can be simply when i say i'm not good in technology or i can't do this or i can't complete this just negating my myself coming up with the excuses and the self-limiting beliefs that i cannot and then once sliver of information is given even me saying i can't do my website but once I learn how to do it and I can go to the back end of it understand certain things I am NOT a coder I don't do SEOs and yet as I was scrolling I saw it's simply there that if you do put a tagline or if you name it then Google Analytics instead of from red it went to orange and i know if i do certain things it can go from orange to green and it's like bingo so by doing that i smiled i smiled because what i had in mind that i cannot or i feel helpless to wow i just did something and by shedding a light on that that i can't and i did and i smiled it was like wow i did something better and so can you and this is my question to you what are the some what are some of the self-limiting beliefs that you've had blocks barriers that you have placed upon yourself that today we can together I can help you make one shift I can help you shift a feeling towards something that was painful and today you can make it maybe not great not happy but something that it's attainable that's it if we can go from zero to four five six and not necessarily a nine that is a shift even from one or two going to three and four it's a significant shift because it's the shift of you realizing I can I matter I have a choice and it is possible As Les Brown says, when you turn the impossible to I am possible, you realize that anything in life 
is possible. So today, love this. Hi, Sloan. Hi, Maris. Oh, my God. This is so amazing. Oh, my God. I want to speak to each and every one of you. And if you want to be on my Heal Talk Tuesdays next week, let's get on. I'd like to interview you. You can come on my show and we can stream your this and make a difference together. This is what I thrive to do. It's not only about me, but it's understanding that every one of us, when we meet, and when we connect, we can together make a bigger difference in life than just one person. Although the voice of one person can be significant, but together we can make a bigger impact in the bigger picture. So today, is realizing that the barriers that we see, the barriers that we create, the barriers that we put, I want you to imagine this, a Jenga, the game of Jenga. And if you haven't ever played this or don't even know what it is, Google it, YouTube it, find it, go buy it. You know, anything is possible right now. And you can find it and play it. So the art of Jenga is to build this beautiful tower all the way to the end. And then when you build it, it's you can play with two, you can play for four, and it can be a group thing because the beauty of it is what? teamwork is together building something and yet each person puts this box of Jenga with strategy and that's how our mind works because consciously we look listen and learn right and then the subconscious I've shared this many times it stores all that information and then secondly, it regulates your entire bodily function. And third, it just like a video camera, it goes all the way to the end. You can rewind it, pause to a picture, a moment, an emotion, connect it to a habit, a pattern, or a decision at that very moment. And even if your hand is moving, you can steady it and place it in there. And then you step back, waiting for someone else to put them uh, another block in there. And once it's complete, then we start pulling them out. Just like patterns, behaviors, habits, that it's no longer beneficial to us. And by doing so, you do it in a way that strategically you pull it out in order for the entire thing not to fall as you are doing it. So the other person, and you do it in a way that when they pull it, it drops on them and you become the winner. Isn't that what life is all about? That we do everything in life so we step away from discomfort and we find ourselves to building success to achieving to making things better healthier stronger happier you know a lot of people say but I want peace in my life what is peace Om. no we don't function in peace. We want comfort. We want joy. We want to feel lighter. We want peace and harmony, but not live in peace at all times. Someone said, if you want peace, you may rest in peace after it's all done. Because this is what life is. 
every single day. We conquer challenges and we find harmony. It's like being in this beautiful hammock. And when you're in a hammock, you realize it's not all cushioned. You don't have the luxury of a bedding that it's all comfortable. It's just a net, a very strong net that has holes. And that's what we are. Even though when you lay in it and you go into this beautiful place, right? And you visualize either being strung from between two trees or the pole, hopefully it's strong to hold this hammock. Or maybe you're at a beach side. But whatever it is, when you look at it, imagine it, it gives you a sense of what? Peace, tranquility, and calm. And yet, it's been woven by a net, by this thread and strength that it still has holes. Just like the yin and yang. When we think about it, we realize in the white, there's that black dot. In the dark side, in the black side, there's this white dot. That means there is no single human being that it's all white, all pure. It's impossible. Even Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa was not all pure. And I believe that in life, even the person who is in jail, who's committed all the murder, mayhem, and things that it's like unimaginable, somewhere, somehow, maybe when they were a child or young, someone touched their heart and there is a light within them. And if we can only capture that light. So, I was meant to be here. I was meant to hear this message. Thank you, Lisa, for going live today. Sloan, I hope this message resonated with you and so many of you. My message, it comes from my heart. And today's message is exactly this. When you make a decision, stand by it, show up in life, and speak up. And this is exactly what my message has become and I am about to do. Every single day, think of one thing. How am I showing up? How do I stand by this decision, my habit, or my patterns? And how may I speak up the things that I have kept in there? Because it's about time you express it. Express it versus suppressing it. And for all of you who have been here, if you do hashtag one, I will gift you a book. One of the books that... I have in my library one of my own books I'll be more than happy actually I'll even gift you one of the books and I'll send it to you hashtag one whoever does hashtag one first I'll send you my book stand up to slim down and with that I want you to remember stand up Speak up because you showed up. And for that, it's my gift to you. This has been an incredible day because it's the end of September and we are now entering another, the last quarter of our year and autumn is here. It's time to cozy up and realize O is a cycle. A lot of cycles can come to fruition 
and for you to change and create a new cycle. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being present. And if you want to be on my show next week, by all means, let me know. This is Lisa, and thank you for being a part of Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. Thank you, Seda, Louisa, Sloan, Maris, and Adrian. Thank you for being here. I'll see you next week. Until then, God bless and may the universal light surround you. Bye, love. Bye, Seda John. Bye, everyone. And if you like this, share it, subscribe, and go to YouTube, and you'll see the rest of all my podcasts. See you then. Bye-bye. That was an afterthought. <laughs> Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I 